With the pickle arc now finally animated, I think it's the perfect time to turn an analytical eye towards everyone's favourite dinosaur fighting caveman. A character who teaches us the reason and point of fighting, as well as being the penultimate opponent for Baki, before he challenges his father. So if you find yourself entertained at any point during the video, then consider liking, subscribing and ringing that bell. Anyway, on with the video. Pickle was a caveman who lived during the Mesozoic period, and although as someone with a zoology degree, I should be moaning about how that makes literally no sense, I will instead just say that this is Baki, so just accept it. Now Pickle as an ancient human, or at least a human-like species, is the earliest example of a person in the Baki series, and so he represents the core attributes that link all of humanity together. As the shared ancestor of all humanity, he embodies some of the deepest and most core parts of what make us human. And I believe that Itagaki uses Pickle to explore what, at least in Baki, are the things that link us all together as humans. And well, to summarise those things into one word, it would be connection. To be human is to be social, to interact with others, and the most pure way to do that is to fight. But that's something for a little bit further into the video. Now, Pickle lived in a time of isolation. He was surrounded with dinosaurs, what in Baki are represented as reptilian monsters. He was alone and so was stripped of humanity's greatest pleasure, being social. His interactions with others, with the world, were simply attacking. The monsters in his ancient world, whether they were carnivores or not, attacked him on sight. Almost as if the world was telling him this wasn't his place to live. He fought back against those that attacked him until something else would come along and repeat the cycle. A constant life of battle. That is all Pickle's life consisted of, yet he could never be fulfilled by such a thing. There was little pride in it. Hence why we see his pride being highlighted so much once he was revived in the modern day. He is a proud man, it's why he only fought those things that attacked him first. Yet in the modern day, his pride evolves and he takes pride in new things. He interacts with humans with others like him for the first time, and this changes the ancient man. He changes. Baki once thought that by fighting he caused harm, a lesson he learnt from the Yasha ape. But in a way, he actually helps people grow through fighting them. He taught Oliver the errors in his thinking, he helped Junior escape the expectations of his father, and he taught Pickle the joys of a fight. It's in a way parallel to Yujiro, who in a lot of ways does the opposite, inflicting pain on those he interacts with. Pickle learns to be social, but how he does this is what's important. He only interacted with people for survival. He went along with Stridem as Stridem was taking him to a place where he could survive. He mugged that gym bro to take his clothes as he knew that is how you survived in the modern city. And he fought Retsu to eat, to survive. Yet through his fight with Retsu, he started to discover something else. He was interacting with the world in a different way. He started to fight not to survive, but because he enjoyed it. His first social interaction that wasn't about survival was about fighting. Maybe that's why his stance mirrors Yujiro, because fighting is something integral to humanity as a whole. Like a lot of things in the series, Pickle's character all comes down to fighting, and more so the nature of a fight. Baki presents fighting as this pure ideal concept. As Oliver says, he isn't pure because he valued the fame and spectacle over the actual fight. In Baki, men don't fight for an end, fighting is the ends. It's about becoming consumed by the fight itself something shown perfectly in the father-son fight later on. Yujiro enjoys the finer things, but he isn't a show-off. He doesn't seek fame, in fact he dislikes it, be it his reaction to the pledge of friendship or his reaction to being a celebrity. He is the pinnacle of the Baki world and of strength, yet he does not seek fame. As said, fighting isn't about the why, it's not down to achieving fame. It's why the characters can easily break world records, yet they don't go to the Olympics. It's another aspect of the series' view of sportsmen, that those who do something to an end to achieve something are inferior to those who do it just to do it. Fame follows the strong because they are strong. To seek recognition is in the series presented as flawed. Which I don't know, might be why Jack's now all about the reaction of the crowd, because he is the flaws of a fighter personified. But anyway, the reason this idea is important in relation to Pickle is because this is the lesson Pickle learns across his arc. He starts as someone who only fought to survive, he killed to eat. Fighting was a means to an end, that end being to eat and so to survive. What Pickle was doing to those dinosaurs, at least in the view of the series, was not true fighting. Pickle fought Retsu, Katsumi and Jack, 
and through them learnt a lesson. The fact he chose to not eat Katsumi's arm but return it, aside from being an important step to his growing appreciation for human connection, is also a testament to this idea of a pure fight. He chose the fight over the ends, he fought Katsumi to eat, but even when he could have, he chose to go hungry, because that fight satisfied him. It was the first time he had become consumed by the fight, sustained by it, in a quite literal way. Which makes it quite funny he preserved Jack as food to eat later after their fight. Poor old Jack just can't catch a break in Son of Ogre. Another fun thing to note is that it's only after Pickle learns to value fights over food that the food issue is solved in story, with the T-Rex corpse being diced up and fed to Pickle. He no longer has to fight for food, the ends vanished, and so the fact he fights on despite this problem no longer existing is clear evidence that he has found another reason to fight beyond food, beyond the ends. He now fights for the fight itself. That is what his fight with Baki represents. It's him having a proper fight for the first time, a truly pure fight. It's why the victor isn't left as a definitive thing. Sure, Pickle did win, but Baki engaged in the slugfest of his own volition. The point being that we aren't meant to be fixated on the winner, because this isn't a fight to decide a victor, it is a fight for just that, to be a fight. This fight is not only Pickle learning this lesson, but Baki internalising it himself. By choosing to not use his techniques and to fight Pickle in a brawl, he threw aside any thoughts of victory, because such things had become pointless. It's why after the Pickle arc, Baki is so insistent on him and his father's fight being just a family quarrel. He always wanted to fight and beat Yujiro for revenge, but as the series goes on, that fades. The ends vanishes as we go through Son of Ogre as Baki learns the truth of fighting. It's why the end of their legendary fight ends the way it does, because it was never a fight about victory. This kind of mirrors Katsumi during the Pickle arc. He wanted to fight Pickle for revenge to avenge Retsu. He was trying to fight for an ends, yet it's only when he throws that aside when he fights just for the sake of further perfecting karate that he is able to fight Pickle. Katsumi has always foiled Baki, and him coming to this understanding is foreshadowing in a lot of ways for Baki in his fight with Yujiro. Katsumi wasn't fighting Pickle just to win, it was more than that. In the same way Baki fighting with Yujiro was not about winning, but about a father and son bonding and coming to a reconciliation. Pickle kind of acts like Yujiro proxy in a lot of ways, but also acts as a foil to Baki. Remember, the whole story is a big old metaphor for a boy growing up. It's about the innocent Baki maturing into an adult. Pickle is like a child in a lot of ways, curious and growing up in an ever-expanding world. He starts as someone who fights for an ends, learns the value of connection. He learns new things from the people he meets, finds pleasure in the underground arena, and eventually comes to fight against the mighty man, connecting with them as they fight, ending in a fight where both of them learn an important lesson. As you might have already figured out, this also perfectly describes Baki and his journey across the series. Pickle is a microcosm of the entire story of Baki, which is why he is the penultimate opponent for Baki before he fights his father. This arc's placing is so important as it is the final test for Baki before he matures, confronting a person much like himself, but more importantly, fighting someone stronger than him. And by that I don't mean in a gotta fight a strong opponent to grow stronger, like was the case of Oliver, no, Pickle represents an opponent Baki cannot beat, because he's the final lesson that he doesn't need to beat his opponent, that he doesn't need to fixate on victory. Cough, cough, again, in complete contrast to the impure fighter Jack, which is foreshadowing for how he wins the father-son fight, even without defeating Yujiro in a literal sense. He is presented as someone even beyond Yujiro. He is a level beyond what Baki is aiming for. And yes, in terms of literal power scaling, Yujiro is obviously stronger than Pickle, but in a narrative sense, he is presented as being another level of strong. Pickle overall then, apart from being a narrative device to hammer home the lessons Baki has learnt before going into his final fight to achieve adulthood, is also a brilliant example of the purity of a fight. That even a man without words can connect and form connections with people through the simple act of fighting. Pickle may be a simple person, but as stressed in the story itself, Pickle is a person, just as much as you and me, and like all of us, deep at heart, he loves nothing more than to fight, for no other reason than to fight. And if you want to support this channel even further, then perhaps pledge to my Patreon, or become a channel member, so you can get your name at the end of the video, like Hikari Desu, Rinjak9696, General Tonyos, and Mr. Sputum. 
So with all that said and done, I've been Seth the Sin, the Deadly Sin of Geek, and I'm signing out. Stay safe, everyone.